Hey there, it's Mr. Wistar again. In this video, we're going to take a look at strings, which are uh, sometimes seem like they are primitives and sometimes seem like they're objects. So let's get started. We're going to take a look first at uh, what a string is and the difference between a variable type string and a uh, what's called a string literal. We're also then going to consider that question, are strings primitives? We'll look at a couple of different ways that you can work with strings, and we'll also talk about some special codes that you're going to need in order to print certain things inside your strings. So, what's a string? Well, uh, it is a variable that contains a sequence of characters. And when we say characters, we mean basically anything that you can print on the screen. Letters, numbers, punctuation, spaces, even things like control characters. They can all be part of a string in any sort of combination. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice down there is that there are double quotes uh, around my examples of strings, and you'll start to get used to that when we talk about strings. Now, those examples from the previous page are good examples of what we call string literals. A string literal is the string equivalent of a number uh, when you have a number variable. It's, uh, it's a value that can be stored in a string variable. And just like it says here, every string literal has to be surrounded by double quotes. Uh, just a tip in my class, if you're using JGrasp, your string literals will always turn green. And you should probably check to make sure that you have all the green stuff that you want and none of the green stuff that you don't. Sometimes you forget your quotation marks and then things go haywire. String literals are also what we call immutable. And without getting into too much of the gory details, what that means is that uh, when you modify a string by say adding something onto the end of it uh, Java doesn't actually change what's inside the quotation marks what it does is it just creates a brand new string literal containing the new value so and then it adds it to the gigantic pool of string literals that are floating out there in the memory of your computer now on the other hand let's take a look at string variables String variables, just like number variables, are created by specifying their type and their name. They can be mutated using the assignment operator, and we'll see some examples of those a little bit later. Okay, now we've talked about what strings are. Let's consider this uh, terribly stressful debate. Are strings primitives? Why do we usually learn them at the same time as number primitive variables? So there are a lot of reasons why you could probably try to convince someone that strings are primitives. You don't need to use the word new when you create them like you would with an object. You can just say string foo gets bar. Um, you can combine them using an operator, the plus sign, which we're going to learn about in a little bit. And you can change them by using the uh, assignment operator, just like we mentioned in the previous slide. So all of those things make them seem very much like an int or a double or a care, uh, the primitive types that we've studied. But there are some things that strings can do that normal primitives just can't. Um, for example, you can use methods with strings. Um, if you uh, study the lesson on calling an object's methods, you will see that there are lots of methods that are use very useful with the string class. Um, things like substring, things like length, things like uh, search. Uh, those are all operations that you can do on a string that you could never do on an int or a double or a float. Also, you can't compare strings to each other um, in the same way that you would with an int. You can't use greater than or less than or equal equal. Um, you have to compare strings to each other just like you would compare objects to each other by using the compare to method. Uh, and that will be covered in a, another lesson when we get to comparing things. And the last, and unfortunately for those of you on the left-hand side of the equation, probably the best piece of evidence that strings are not primitives is that they're actually specified in the Java API as a public class. So if you go to the Java API, you can look up public class. It'll tell you everything that you want to know about the public class string. And since classes are what we use to make objects, I think, unfortunately, we have to say that strings are objects. But just remember, they do act a lot like primitives. Okay. Now that we've settled that debate, let's talk about strings and how you use them and um, how you change their value. So creating a string is just like creating a primitive. You would just say string and then the name of the variable. 
same rules for names for strings apply to any other variable. And in order to assign them a value, just like with a, any other primitive variable, you use the assignment operator. And you can assign as many different values as you want to to a string. And I didn't include that as an example here, but you can also assign the value stored in one string variable to another variable. So if I wanted to create a new variable here, I could say um, string name2 gets name. And then they would both have the value Roger. Now, if you have two strings that you want to somehow stick together, um, which is very common actually when it comes time to printing things or creating larger strings, um, you need to combine them in a special way. You need to combine them using the plus sign. And the plus sign in the case of strings isn't for addition, it's for something called concatenation which is just a fancy word for sticking two strings together. And you have to remember that strings get stuck together like subway cars. They just get joined one after the other after the other. So here's an example here. If I have two strings with names in them, I can combine them into my full name by using um, the plus sign. And notice down there I actually have two plus signs because I'm combining three string values uh, one of them is in a variable, one of them is the string literal space, and then another variable. Last thing before we take a look at an example is this topic of escape sequences. Escape sequences are special codes that you can put inside your string literals that produce uh, certain characters that would otherwise be hard to write. For example, if you want your string to uh, go over multiple lines, uh, you have to use the backslash n character inside of the string. Um, if you wanted to put tabs inside your string, you could use backslash t. And over on the right hand side, you actually see a couple of uh, printable escape sequences. And if you think about it, uh, I just want to focus on the last one, for example. Think about the one for double quotes. Why do we need an escape sequence for double quotes? Um, Think about that, and if you're not sure what the answer is to that, you should bring it to class, because I think it's an interesting thing to talk about. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Here, I'm going to try to use this Zoom feature, so look out, this could be a disaster. So here's a program I wrote, um, and I want to kind of walk you through the code a little bit, and then uh, take a look at what happens when it runs. So here's a uh, simple program with one class and a main method. Uh, I have created two string variables and I've assigned them the value of two string literals. Remember string literals in JGRASP are green. Um, I have then created two more string variables and I've shown you an example of how you can call a method on a string variable. Um, and uh, the syntax for calling methods will be covered in another lesson. I just wanted to point out to you here that this is one example of how strings can act like um, other kinds of objects. And then here I've concatenated the two strings together and I've stored it in a fifth variable. So, and then I have uh, two print statements down here. And notice in this print statement I have used the escape sequence for the double quotes. And you'll see what that looks like when I run my program. Let's see if I can zoom in down here first. No, I won't be able to do that and still hit plus. So I'm just going to go ahead and plus uh, to compile. And then I'm going to hit the running man to run. And let's zoom in again down here. And so now we can see here's the output. Here's my concatenated uh, variable with initials in it. And here is my um, line that contains the escape sequence for the double quotes. So uh, just to quickly recap, we talked about strings. They might act like primitives, but they're really objects. You can create and manipulate them using the standard syntax for creating variables. Um, you can combine them together by using the plus sign. And if you need to put special characters inside them, you need to use something called an escape sequence. All right, you're all set.